Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's the first time you're visiting. Thank you so much for joining me today. So if you haven't already guessed by the title, today we are going to be discussing my top 10 full winter gourmand fragrances. Now this was really difficult for me to whittle down to 10 fragrances only and I tried to make it a little bit more unique. So I haven't pulled just 10 vanilla gourmand fragrances. I've tried to add in different nuances throughout this collection. And I like my gourmands to be very wearable. I don't wanna just smell like a straight up snack, although that is nice sometimes. I do like my fragrances pretty balanced. So if you like the sound of this video, then please do keep on watching. Now, before we get started on the content, I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. It really means a lot to me and it helps my channel out tremendously. So let's get started on the top 10 gourmand fragrances. So first things first, I wanna thank you all for giving me so many amazing recommendations down in the comments. It really does help me out and I do go out of my way to research these fragrances and sniff them if I can. And the first fragrance I'm gonna be talking about in my top 10 gourmands is actually a fragrance that so many of you recommended to me. So you clearly know my tastes well and I haven't had this fragrance long, but I absolutely adore it already. And the fragrance in question is Zerzhov Starlight and can we take a moment for this bottle because it is absolutely gorgeous. I have tried photographing this bottle and it is actually quite difficult because it's so reflective but aside from the packaging the juice inside is what counts and I adore this one. It's got one of my favorite fragrance notes in there, which is cardamom, but it also has the nice balance of amber, cinnamon. It's very resinous. It has a citrus up top. It is ultra, ultra delicious. I bake quite regularly and I make a really mean cardamom cake. And this to me just smells exactly like that. It is extremely wearable and it does smell like a very realistic cardamom note. But for me personally, it lasts about four to five hours on the skin, but it does last a lot longer on clothing. However, that doesn't bother me because I truly, truly enjoy this fragrance so much. So I do appreciate everyone who recommended this fragrance for me to try. I love it, so thank you so much. So this is the first fragrance in my top full winter gourmand recommendations. So the next fragrance I wanna discuss is very different from Starlight. It is still a gourmand, but it is completely different. It doesn't have the notes you would typically think of when you go for that kind of sweet, sticky gourmand fragrance like caramels, vanillas, etc. This one goes in a completely different direction. So stay with me here, but this is incredible. And the fragrance in question is Tio Cabanel Je ne sais quoi. And the juice is incredible. And I actually think the juice sums up this fragrance so, so well. It is a really beautiful bottle, but again, like anything, the juice is what counts in this review. And to me, this is such a comforting scent. It smells like rice pudding, straight up rice pudding, a very creamy and lactonic version. But the rice note in here is ultra realistic and I do not know how they did it, but it smells like you've just opened a fresh bag of rice and you get that kind of dusty rice aroma, which doesn't sound great, but I promise you it is. And then you've got this lactonic kind of creamy vibe in there too. It does have lots of other notes in there, but what I truly get is a rice pudding vibe. The opening is very much rice, but then it dries down with that lactonic vibes. And I think this is such a gorgeous fragrance. Oh. I love it so much. It is super unique and like I said, I find it extremely comforting. This is the fragrance that I would reach for on maybe like a Sunday afternoon. I was wearing like a cozy sweater and I just wanted to relax. So yeah, a very different gourmand, but still very much an edible gourmand with different nuances. So that is Tio Cabanel Je ne sais quoi. Now I couldn't do a gourmand video without including an ultra gourmand. And what I mean by that is this is what I would stereotypically think of when someone is asking me for a sweet gourmand fragrance. And that is none other than the House of Oud What About 
pop. And can we take a moment for the bottle? Because wow, this is absolutely gorgeous. And I mentioned it in a different video, but all of these marble tops are hand dipped. So each bottle is completely unique, which I think is really incredible. And I think the bottle design sums up this fragrance so well, because it is a caramel popcorn fragrance. And in case you didn't know, you actually just take it off like this, and this is the actual bottle, and the cap is extremely weighted. So how does the House of Oud What About Pop smell? To me, it is a straight up caramel salted popcorn. It has kind of like a burnt caramelized essence within the dry down. It is an extremely sweet gourmand, so you do have to like your sweet fragrances to appreciate this. And when I first received this, I wasn't sure if I liked it. It took me a while to appreciate it. However, they captured this scent so, so well. I think in the summer, this fragrance actually is where it best comes alive, but I could imagine this being nice in the cooler weather. Ultra, ultra comforting. And I actually wore this about two days ago. I had a shower and I lotioned up with a nice vanilla body cream and then I added this on top and it smelt incredible. So if you like a note of popcorn, if you also like the notes of caramel and what I was saying about that burnt sugary vibe, then I think you would actually really enjoy this one. And it is a masterpiece to have on display too. So definitely try to get a sample if you can. But this is the House of Oud What About Pop. The next fragrance I want to discuss is one of my newest favorite fragrances in my collection. And I slept on this one for far too long. I did speak about it recently, however, it had to reach my top 10 gourmand fragrances list, and that is none other than Fragrance Dubois Minuit et Demi. And this is the collaboration between the fragrance house, Fragrance Dubois, and Demi Rawlings, and she absolutely nailed this fragrance, in my opinion. The bottle is gorgeous, it's very similar to how the other Fragrance Dubois bottles are, very weighted and very luxurious but the scent again is what matters here. And this is a combination of so many of my favorite notes, but it has a very prominent cardamom note in there, similar to Zerzhov Starlight. However, this takes a little bit of a different direction. It doesn't have those citrusy nuances that Starlight have. This one I'd say is even more cozy, very sexy in my opinion, and perfect for autumn winter. I absolutely adore this and it would definitely be in my top 10 fragrances for life if I did an updated version, and it would probably be even in my top five, but we will see how that lands when I get to making that video. But this to me is so, so perfect. It is so comforting. Like I said, I think it's sexy. It's got all of the notes I enjoy within a fragrance, and I have included the notes on the screen so you can take a look yourself. But for me, it's just the most beautiful kind of coffee, cardamom, caramel scent, and she nailed it straight up. So that is Fragrance du Bois, Minuit et Demi. The next fragrance that I wanna discuss is BDK Velvet Tonka. And this, without a doubt, was always going to feature in this list. I think this is one of the most perfect fall and winter gourmand fragrances that is out there. And it is also one of my favorite Tonka fragrances. Stay tuned because I am working on my top 10 Tonka fragrances list for you guys. I've nearly finished it. It will be coming out soon. And that is something to also note. I had a lot more Tonka fragrances that I could have put in this list, but I wanted to give you variety of the types of notes within all of these fragrances. So stay tuned for that video. But this one definitely had to land in this video. And BDK Velvet Tonka is a very linear Tonka in my opinion. It smells like cake batter to my nose, very prominent in the almond note and very prominent in Tonka. It projects like crazy and also the longevity is really good on me. It is a very sweet fragrance in my opinion, but the bitter almond almost brings it back a little bit and makes it wearable. It might pull a little bit Play-Doh vibe for some people's tastes. However, I think this is so, so delicious and I wear it all the time. I use this as a layering scent too. And something that I layered the other day, which was incredible, was the new Golan Shalimar Tonka and Velvet Tonka by BDK. And that combination, wow, 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 chef's kiss, game over. So the fifth fragrance in my gourmand list is BDK Velvet Tonka. 
Okay, so the next fragrance I have been wanting to talk about for some time. However, we've only just reached the season where I feel it is most appropriate for, and this is 100% one of the best gourmand fragrances in my collection. That's my opinion, and I hope that you've smelt this one. But if not, you definitely need to go out and try this because I think this is beautiful. And that is none other than Commodity Milk. And this is the regular concentration. You can also get the personal version, which projects a little bit less. And you can also get the bold version, which will project to the whole room. However, this was my personal favorite out of the three scent spaces. And if you're not sure which one to pick, I'd recommend getting the discovery set where you can try each version of it. So Commodity Milk is definitely one of my favorite comforting fall and winter gourmand scents. And this is absolutely stunning. I do not even drink milk. I am lactose intolerant, if you would like to know, too much information. So if the name milk puts you off in any way, please do not let it do so, because this to me is just a beautiful, creamy, lactonic, kind of marshmallow and woods scent. So it has notes of milk in there, but it also has notes of marshmallow and mahogany wood. And to me, this smells like I am roasting a marshmallow over a hot, fire and I just think it is delicious it doesn't smell like traditional milk it's just very creamy almost like a whipped cream marshmallowy vibe it is absolutely beautiful one of my favorite comforting scents in my collection you are going to smell delicious if you wear this one and I have seen this hyped across different social channels and it is hyped for good reason absolutely love it and highly recommend so that was commodity milk the next fragrance I want to discuss is Alexandra J Imperial Peacock and wow 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 this packaging is extremely special. It actually has peacocks adorned on this beautiful ornate glass bottle. I think it's absolutely show stopping, it's very weighted. However, whilst the packaging is gorgeous, the juice inside is sublime. And Alexandra J really, really impressed me. I want to pick up Oriental Enigma too, which my girl Sharida has. I will link her channel below. But Imperial Peacock is just such a gorgeous combination. It is ultra gourmand to my nose. It has tonka bean in there, which I love. But the main notes I really pick out is the rhubarb, the almond, the vanilla, the heliotrope. It's just such a stunning fragrance. The combination of the rhubarb against the tonka bean and the almond makes this ultra unique in my opinion. It is super wearable and this will last you all day. It is an extremely sweet fragrance. It does have a note of cinnamon in there which does balance it out for me to make it not too sweet. But I think you can't go wrong with this. It is a Harrods exclusive here in the UK, but you can pick it up from the Alexandra J website in Europe. And I know they do ship to the US too, if you live across the pond. However, do go check out where you can find this one because it is well worth adding to your collection if you can find it. So that was Alexandra J Imperial Peacock. The next fragrance I want to discuss with you is highly underrated in my opinion. I think more people need to discover this one. It is so, so delicious. And that is Eight and Bob Anique number no. five. And I only picked up the little bottle, which I kind of regret. However, there was a little bit of a story behind this one. And I asked the sales associate what her favorite fragrance was on the shop floor. And this is the one that she led me to. And I think she has such fantastic taste because I was so drawn to this and I had to pick it up. It has notes in there, a rum, amber, honey, plum. It is super, super delicious. I think this is one of the best gourmand fragrances in my collection. Perfect again for the seasons that we're in now. And I think if you haven't smelt this one, I would highly recommend going to test this. It is a super potent fragrance. It would be very wearable in the winter too. It's a different kind of gourmand in my opinion. It's a lot more deep, dark, and mysterious. But the combination of that caramel and the plum and the rum, wow, 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 delicious. So the sales associate in Harvey Nichols, thank you so much for recommending this to me. I absolutely love it. So that was Eight and Bob Anique number five. 
We are nearing the end of the list and I had so many other fragrances I could have added to this video. However, like I said, I wanted to make it as diverse as possible with different types of scent profiles. So with that in mind, the next fragrance in the list is Stefan Humbert Lucas Sand Dance. And I absolutely adore the snake bottles. I actually have three from this collection, but Sand Dance is just a perfect, perfect gourmand fragrance. Super, super comforting. And if you have ever tried the drink Irish whiskey liqueur, it smells very similar to that in my opinion. It does have a lot of other nuances riding throughout the fragrance profile, including cacao, which just makes this ultra delicious. So if you could imagine drinking like a whiskey or rum creamy liqueur drink with a cacao powder dusting on the top, this is what this smells like to me. But it also has a lot of other notes in there to ground it, such as cashmerin, benzoin, and tonka bean. And I just think this is ultra delicious and I can't wait to get more wear out of it this season. And if you can, do go and check out the Stefan Humbert Lucas Serpent Collection because there are so many bangers within that collection. I personally have Sand Dance and then I have Venom Incarnate, which is one of my all time favorite fragrances. And I have God of Fire, which is just the perfect spring summer scent, but I could wear that in autumn winter too. However, today we're talking about Sand Dance. So that was Stefan Humbert Lucas Sand Dance. Okay, so we're on to the last fragrance and I wish I could have included more in here, but I wanted to make it a top 10 video. However, if you would like a part two to this gourmand fragrances video, please do let me know because I have a lot more that I could share with you. So the last fragrance in this collection will be probably no surprise to any of my regular viewers of this channel. And that is Killian Angel Share. And I talk about this fragrance quite a lot on my channel because I truly think it is such an incredible and versatile fragrance for both men and women. It gets so many compliments. It could be my most complimented fragrance in my collection. And I think it is just ultra, ultra delicious. Again, it's another boozy fragrance and it has a top note of cognac, which absolutely cuts through. But the vibe I truly get from this fragrance, and I've mentioned it so, so many times, is a spiced apple pie. And that's completely what I get from this. However, it is a lot more unique than that. And people pick out all of the other notes within this fragrance, which include tonka bean, praline, cinnamon, vanilla, sandalwood, and oak. It is an ultra special fragrance and I can't really imagine anyone disliking this. However, of course there are gonna be people out there but I just think this is so very delicious. I get so many compliments when I wear this one and it will always be a staple in my collection. So that was Killian's Angel Share. I feel a bit sad now I finished the top 10 list because I truly know that there are so many more that I could be talking about. However, I did want to round up a versatile top 10 list. Please do let me know if there were any that caught your eye in this list. Do you own any of these in your collection already or maybe that you want to purchase it in the future? But more importantly, what I want to know is what are your favorite gourmand fragrances? Because you know I am going to go search them, I'm going to try and sniff them, and I likely will purchase some in the future. So please do pop that down in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. It's been a pleasure as always, and I hope to see you all in a future video to come. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much, and goodbye.